Welcome to Wednesday's edition of KTRU News. Tonight we have an interview with the president of Gays and Lesbians of Rice. But first, headlines. Bush unveiled a $1.52 trillion budget today. The budget is expected to lighten the tax load for families and businesses. Bush plans to increase spending on children and cut back on Medicare help for the aged. How is Bush going to pay for this, you ask? After all, didn't he say during his State of the Union speech that we need to reduce our federal debt? Well, now we know how truthful he was yesterday. His budget will have a $400 billion deficit, the largest ever in the United States. The Middle East peace talks ended in Moscow today. Participants agreed to hold more meetings this spring. Unfortunately, the Palestinians were boycotting the talks, and Syria and Lebanon never showed up, so I'm not sure quite how much they accomplished. Boris Yeltsin will appear on 2020 Friday to dispute rumors that he drinks a lot. During the interview, which was taped today, he said that unlike Gorbachev, he doesn't consult his wife about political decisions. On this date in 1737, Thomas Paine was born. Thomas Paine, in case you don't remember your high school history, was the author of Common Sense, an appeal for American independence from the v British. The French Revolution caused him to write The Rights of Man, pleading for government by democracy and in accordance with reason. While these are his two most famous pieces of writing, my personal favorite is The Age of Reason, published in 1794. You will now hear an excerpt from The Age of Reason. This is from the chapter entitled, Against the Biblical Revelation. Every national church or religion has established itself by pretending some special mission from God, communicated to certain individuals, communicated to certain individuals. The Jews have their Moses, the Christians their Jesus Christ, the apostles and saints, and the Turks their Muhammad, as if the way to God was not open to every man alike. Each of those churches show certain books, which they call Revelation, or the Word of God. The Jews say that their word of God was given by God to Moses face to face. The Christians say that their word of God came by divine inspiration. And the Turks say that their word of God, the Quran, was brought by an angel f from heaven. Each of those churches accuses the other of unbelief. And for my own part, I disbelieve them all. Thomas Paine died in 1809. Today is his 255th birthday. And now on to our feature interview. Gays and lesbians have been socially condemned for many years now in our country, and they are just starting to come out of the closet without fear of universal condemnation. One would think that homosexuals would be most accepted at a university, where people tend to be more liberal and open to new ideas. But from the interview you are about to hear, it seems that changing the ideas of society concerning homosexuality is a very hard thing to do. I spoke earlier tonight with Corey West, president, and Michael Myers, member of Galore, Gays and Lesbians of Rice. Here's what they had to say. Corey, Michael, thank you for joining me. Well, thanks for having us on the air. Tell me about uh, Galore. What has your organization been, been up to lately? Um, right now, Galore is in a, a restructuring phase from the past two years. Basically, we've, we've had periods of inactivity and um, some, some light leadership, and I've just recently taken over the group, not really taken over, but have gone into executive guidance or being the president. And uh, we're kind of reestablishing ourselves on campus as a support group and rebuilding some of our educational services and also starting a new phase of, of educational services that are computer-related, providing some computer access and computer support. And that's kind of a pet project of mine. What's the goal of Galore? If you could make rice any way you wanted, what would you change? Um, the goal of Galore isn't... It is necessarily to change things on campus. Our primary function... I feel is to be visible and to help kind of alleviate some of the tensions on campus between um, homosexual students and heterosexual students and students who aren't really sure of their sexual identity that are just kind of, kind of experimenting or, or discovering themselves. Um, primarily we serve as a support group, but we also fill a lot of educational needs on campus and in the, in the future we'll be filling other needs, um, social and, and uh, other needs that gay students on campus gay and bisexual students on campus that we'll need. Do most gay people at Rice belong to Galore? Um, and why don't all of them belong? Um, that's been an interesting issue for, for quite a while. Mike might have something to say on that. Oh, I'd say that the vast majority of gay students at Rice do not belong. And I think because of 
Well, I guess because of the, the perception on campus that it's a politicized organization, that it's mostly involved with political issues. And the apathy at Rice has been just such that I'm, I, I think people just really aren't interested in that so much, or maybe they haven't been in the past. Mm -hmm. The other problem with on-campus versus off-campus um, membership in Galore is that there are, since we're in a big city, there are a lot of gay and lesbian services that are off-campus, and some students find it much safer to go away from campus where they don't know anyone to first discover and experiment in their sexual um, orientation. What about professors? Are there any gay professors at Rice? Um, well, I'm sure there must be. There are gay professors at Rice. They don't belong to Galore. Okay. Right. Um, what's the proportion between gays and lesbians in your organization? Uh, it's kind of a weighted organization right now, and we're not sure why that is. We're, we tend to be more about 75% gay men and about 25% lesbian women, um, and that also fluctuates quite frequently. So I, I'm not sure if Rice Women's Alliance or if the other feminist organizations on campus are fielding more of the needs of the lesbian students on campus, but that may be the case. There seems to be a big problem at Rice with um, people admitting their homosexuality, coming out of the closet, so to speak. Um, if, for example, in the Campanile last year, uh, the Rice yearbook, only six people from Galore actually showed their faces. What happened to everyone else? Well, this is a problem that isn't uh, indigenous to Rice. It's, it's in existence all across the U.S. Basically, people around the age group of juniors and seniors in college is when they first start to come out and they're usually not very comfortable or very secure in their own sexual identity to a point that they can become involved in a group on campus. Um, a lot of people just don't choose to have their picture taken or don't really feel comfortable getting involved with the group until much later on and even when they do become involved with the group they still want to avoid really being identified as being a member of Galore while they're on campus. How many members do you actually have? Well, at the beginning of the year party this year, we had about 35 people. Um, core members, probably 15 to 20, and it fluctuates from there. I also noticed in the yearbook that a few of you were holding signs that said 21, eight, uh, 2106 and mm -hmm. had a line drawn through it. Right. W w what was that? 2106 is the Texas Penal Code that makes sodomy illegal. Okay. And sodomy is defined as quite a broad range of activities. Mm -hmm. So, I think straight people would be surprised if they really knew what was illegal for them, too. Mm -hmm. um, how have students reacted to people like you who don't hide your sexual orientation? Well, my story is, a, is an interesting one because I came here, I came out during orientation week of my freshman year. I was out in high school and I told my roommate and then I told my entire college, not all at once, but came out and I, have, I just don't hide my sexual orientation. It's part of my personality that other people, um, that I want to share with other people because it's very important to me. I haven't had very many negative responses. In fact, what I have had happen to me most is people just kind of say, oh, you know, I've never really had that sort of experience before, and I'm finding that I'm opening more eyes and doing more good than I am harm for the most part, which is really important to me. Is a politically correct atmosphere at Rice desired by Galore? That depends on what you mean by politically correct. Um, I think Galore would like to see an end to discrimination and maybe even an end to heterosexism. But as far as politically correct goes, I'm not sure what that means. I mean... What's the attitude of the administration towards Galore? Have they been at all positive or negative? A lot of the administration that we've come in contact with have been very supportive. Um, actually, more supportive than I might have imagined. Of course, we have a very limited interaction with the administration, mostly with student activities and minority affairs and then other organizations like the RMC for requesting rooms and services and things. But we've always had fairly good response from the administration. What about other campus groups like the Rice Thresher or Campus Crusade for Christ? Well, we haven't, per se, experienced any real discrimination. The Thresher occasionally cuts our, our, our ads or our notices really short, and I'm still looking into why that is, and it might just be for space concerns, but we've had several long announcements truncated to one line. Um, so that, that's curious. The other organizations really aren't aware of us. What we, we just recently participated in the um, minority affairs retreat for um, minority student groups, and this was the first year that Galore was involved in that. And the other student groups 
were at first, I think, a little reluctant to accept us, but once they got to know us and, and understand more where we were coming from, it was a very warm and supporting environment. Let's talk about religion. Are many of, many of your members Christian? Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. yes. Some of them are, yes. Yeah. Our members are, are from all religious backgrounds. Um, there are gay Jews and gay Christians and gay Muslims and... Gay atheists. Gay atheists. I mean, it's... The, uh, the picture of the typical homosexual as being an atheist or an agnostic is not necessarily true. How do they deal with the fact that the Bible essentially condemns homosexuality? Well, that I think that could be another another interview all in itself. But the Bible, the Bible can be read many different ways. And in fact, in Leviticus, in some of the 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 laws in Leviticus, that homosexuality is condemned, the act itself. And a lot of gay gay people deal with that by recognizing that the act of homosexuality is a sin, but that their base homosexuality isn't. Um, uh, there are so many different varying opinions on this and uh, that I don't even I couldn't even begin to give you a definitive answer but there are many gay and lesbian religious organizations for example MCCR which is Metropolitan Community Church of the Resurrection um, it's a it's a very large very thriving Christian church that primarily caters to homosexuals and and finally what does Galore have planned for the future we have so much planned for the future it's incredible um, I would, I, my personal goals are to see education and support on campus increase by at least a thousand percent, have our vi visibility increase, um, and eventually start making some serious impact on the campus. Um, I think it's ex essential that people know that we exist and know that we're a support service as well as an educational service, and also to kind of lighten up the air on campus. A lot of homosexuals on campus feel that, that the rice environment is really oppressive when it's, it's not necessarily. So what should people do if they want more information about Galore? The best way to get in contact with Galore is to call me at 528-5765 and leave a message. I'm the, the central contact. And you'll see that number published in the newspaper every now and then, too. Another really easy way to get in contact with Galore that's semi-anonymous and uh, simple is you can send us email, galore at rice.edu or galore at ricevm1. And both of those addresses will get bounced to the current network contact. Corey, Michael, thank you for joining us. Thank you very much. That was Corey West, President, and Michael Myers, member of Galore, Gays and Lesbians of Rice. This is Brad, and thank you for listening to KTRU Radio. Back to you.